compelling, complex relationships with their vaginas. This particular woman blows my mind. She was a sex worker, but she only did sex work with women. The woman who loved to make vaginas happy. I love vaginas. I love women. I don't see the two as separate things. Women pay me to dominate them, to excite them, to make them come. I didn't start out like this. To the contrary, I was a lawyer. But in my late thirties, I became obsessed with making women happy. It became a mission of sorts. But then I got involved in it. I got very good at it. Kind of brilliant. It was my art. I started getting paid for it. It was as if I had found my calling. I wore outrageous outfits when I dominated women. Lace, silk, leather. And I used props. Whips, handcuffs, dildos. I, <laughs> there was nothing like this in tax law. <laughs> there were no props, no excitement, and I hated those blue corporate suits, though they do serve me from time to time in my work. There were no props, no wetness, no dark, mysterious foreplay, no red nipples, no delicious mouths, but mainly there was no moaning. I thought that was it. That was the key. Moaning was the thing that ultimately seduced me and got me addicted to making women happy. When I was a little girl, and I... And I when I was a little girl, I would see women in movies making these strange orgasmic moaning noises. I used to laugh. I got strangely hysterical. I couldn't believe that big, outrageous, ungoverned sounds like that came out of women. <laughs> I longed to moan. I practiced in front of the mirror, on a tape recorder, making moans in various keys and tones. But always when I played it back, it sounded fake. It was fake. It wasn't rooted in any it wasn't rooted in anything sexual, just my desire to be sexual. But then when I was 10, I had pee really badly once. On a car trip, I went on for almost an hour. When I finally got to pee in this dirty little gas station, it was so exciting, I moaned. <laughs> I moaned as I peed. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Me moaning at a Texaco gas station in the middle of Louisiana, I realized right, right then that moans were not connected with getting what you want right away, putting things off. I realized moans were best when they caught you off by surprise and came out of this hidden, mysterious part of you that was speaking its own language. I realized that moans were, in fact, this language. I became a moaner. <laughs> I made most men anxious. Frankly, it terrified them. I was loud and they couldn't concentrate on what they were doing. They lost focus and then they lose everything. <laughs> were too thin. I got a reputation in my building and people started to with contempt in the elevator. <coughs> they thought I was too intense. Some called me insane. I began to feel bad about moaning. I got quiet, polite, I made noise into a pillow. I learned to choke down my moan, hold it back like a sneeze. I began to get headaches and stress-related disorders. I became hopeless when I discovered women. I discovered that most women liked my moaning, loved my moaning, but more importantly, I discovered how deeply excited I got when other women moaned, when I was responsible for their moaning. I made love to quiet women that found this place inside of them that shocked themselves in their moaning. I made lo lo love to moaners who found a deeper, more penetrating moan. It was a kind of surgery, a delicate science, finding the tempo, the exact location or home of the moan. That's what I called it. <laughs> sometimes I found it over a woman's jeans. Sometimes I snuck up on it, off the record, quietly disarming the surrounding alarms and moving in. Sometimes I use force, but not the violent, depressing force. More like dominating, I'm going to take you someplace, don't worry, lay back and enjoy the ride, kind of force. Sometimes it was simply mundane. I found the moan before things even got started, while we were eating salad or chicken, just casual, right there with my fingers. Here it is, like that. Real simple, in the kitchen, all mixed up with balsamic vinegar. <laughs> Sometimes I use props. I love props. Sometimes I'm, I'm 
find me the woman find her moan in front of me. I waited. Step it out. She opened herself. And I wasn't fooled by the minor, more obvious moans. No, I pushed her further, all the way into her power moan. There was the click moan, the vaginal moan, the combo click vaginal moan. There was the almost moan, the elegant moan, the great slick moan. Mm-hmm. <laughs>